Hello YouTube, it is Chris here and in today's episode we're going to be discussing my top 10 survival power stations for when the grid goes down. Welcome back everybody and thank you for sticking with me. Like I said, today we're going to be discussing my top 10 survival power stations for when the grid goes down. And before we get started, we want to give a major shout out to the sponsor of today's episode, which is Sharp Pal. For those of you who follow my channel regularly, you'll know that we take power stations out on our survival adventures. If you saw our survival stockpile video, which will be up in the right hand corner of the screen, you will see that, that in that episode, we showcase some of the ones we had and we've gotten some new additions since then. But with that said, we want to discuss our top 10. Now we're actually going to break those down in two subcategories to make it a little bit easier. The first is going to be on the move, day hiking, bug out bag, power stations and extended life batteries. The next size up from there will be single person power stations. And then finally, we're gonna be jumping up into the big Berthas, which are kind of the household and family size power units. Now jumping into the first section, these are the kind of the day hiking, on the move kind of an adventure setting. These are the ones you bring in your camping, backpacking scenarios, your bug out bag. And, or you keep them in your glove box. There's a ton of different ways to store very small, high power batteries all over the place. And these are some of my go-tos. This is the Outdoor Extreme Energy. It has a solar panel built inside, 10,000 milliamps. Really, really tough. These things have flashlights. They're usually pretty durable. I try to stick to the durable, you know, tough build ones just because they tend to be a little bit more robust. One of my favorites is the Zero Lemon Tough Juice battery. This is a 30,000 milliamp battery they have like USB-C type 2 and type 3 USB ports they're pretty much anything you need but these are some of my go-to's that I like to bring I have several of these this is just a small little sampling I have I think like five or six of them just because I can bring two of these out with me for a short seven day trip or shorter and I can pretty much keep my cameras charged the entire time that's how much juice these things are packing and then something that I can bring with them are my all powers my 80 watt solar panel I can let this charge up one of these for about two days and we're good to go. As with my current power consumption, when I'm out in the bush or the wild, this thing can last me up to about four days if I have to recharge my cameras by two to three times a day. So it's plenty of power usage. Some other convenient types of models, which is a kind of a newer one from a company called Novo. And if you want any information on these, we'll definitely have these linked in the video description. But this one actually has a 110 volt outlet for something so small that's kind of like a soda can is pretty freaking cool because they have USB type C, normal USB and the 110 outlet, which is super awesome. Now we move on to personal or single person power stations. This is my personal category. And as you can tell, compared to a external battery, even though these are really, really small, got handles, easy to pick up. They usually weigh anywhere between four to 17 pounds. They're pretty easy to, they're pretty portable, but they are substantially bigger, usually because they have a higher capacity. Now these range anywhere between 150 watt hours all the way up to about 300 watt hours, which is the average for what I call personal use. Once you jump into the 500 watt hours or higher, I start putting that into a family or a household size unit. I can start powering more things because of the inverters that they usually place in the larger units. Now, because these can't really power things like refrigerators and really big appliances, these are definitely for personal use, but they are very, very potent, especially if you want these for something you can grab and go, stick it in your vehicle during a bug out or a hurricane evacuation, just in-home preparedness. If you're a single person in an apartment, these are a really good place to start with. Now, I've actually had most of these for anywhere between one year to six months, and why you haven't really seen them before is because I would typically charge them up and let them sit on a shelf, literally, for five or six months because I wanted to see how they hold their charge. And all of these perform pretty darn well. This one, which is the Rock Pals, is an interesting one. The power station did the worst as far as its ability to hold the charge. It still did very well. It was about 65% overall uh, after sitting on the shelf for six months. Uh, the one that actually is one of my favorites, it is a, a lot less powerful as far as its wattage. This is a 300 watt hour. This is only a 200 watt hour. This is the Anchor Powerhouse. But this one held its charge like a champ. After six months, it had a 97% charge. This is the Boss Watt Solar. Actually has two 110 volt AC outlets, which I like. I thought it was super, super convenient. There are certain situations like on my 30 day survival challenge, 
last year I actually had this with me and it was using it was charging up my iPads my GoPros and my other cameras and because I had those two outlets it was a lifesaver this is probably my biggest godsend it's been through hell and back with me and it's done really really well I love the fact that it's got the four USB outlets this one has the best inverter and also has the most options for a personal size that I've seen so far, especially for the money. Like I said, if you guys want to get any more info about, about these, I'll definitely have those links in the video description. And then last but not least, this is a newer one from Novo. And it has a lot of good options. It has, because these are newer, they have USB type C, which is really nice since that's becoming a lot more prevalent in tech and electronics, which is going to be kind of a concern for most people moving forward. And if you're really behind on tech and you don't care about what types of USB ports they've got, go for it. Just pick whichever one you want, want up. But if you are kind of in the techie realm, you've got newer laptops and things like that, for your power stations to keep things charged, this is gonna do you the best. And last but not least, we move on to household or family size power stations. Now you see three massive units, and I don't look that big because we've got a big, huge ultra wide lens on, but these are the Mac Daddies. These are big, big, big dudes. Now I know you guys are very familiar with the energy line because they're on every single survival channel and they were even on our channel. About a year ago, we tested this thing through and through, built an actual foundation for a survival shelter and did full on construction projects with it and it held it like a champ. Now, as far as the best of the best for home and household use, it pretty much boils down to the Ego Nexus power station, which is a 3000 watt unit. And this is the energy, which is a 11 watt unit and we're going to be going over the pros and cons of why I think these two are the best and why and then we've got the Jackery which is a 500 watt hour Explorer that is kind of just a juiced up super amped kind of single person unit or it could be a family unit however as a family unit I think it's lacking drastically because of the fact that it only has one outlet for 110 volts I think that is completely unacceptable for that being a Full, it's a big unit, 500 watt hour unit, and it's literally only has two pl uh, one plug in, which I think is unacceptable. It's also lacking in the USB ports. It's, it's it's like the very minimal output for its size, given the fact that a lot of the personal units that are much 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 smaller in size and scale, and are, are drastically lower in watt hour uh, wattage capacity and size, have just as many outlets and ports than all the other ones. Now keep in mind with it being a 500 watt hour unit, it is about 500 bucks, still a solid price point to jump into, but overall, I think that I would like to see maybe one more USB port and definitely, at least at a minimum, one additional 110 volt outlet. Now that we've got the Jackery out of the way, for the people who wanna take it seriously and jump up to the big guns for a power station, these are the two that are gonna be my biggest recommendations, and for several reasons. Um, one, I've thoroughly vetted and tested this bad boy as a, the energy power station, I absolutely love it. With it only weighing 25 pounds, it's got more outlets and more versatility than any inverter slash power station I've ever used in my entire life. It's a little lacking on the USB ports now because they've kind of swapped between USB-C and USB 3.0, but it, the 110 outlets is just staggering. The amount of stuff that you can charge with this is crazy and it having a 90 amp hour battery built in is just asinine. It is awesome. But with that said, let's jump over to the Nexus power station. This is also a 3000 watt unit, which has 3000 uh, peak wattage and it can handle 2000 sustained. This is one of my favorites. And typically this is actually used for like cordless lawn mowers and whatnot. But the reason why this is actually gonna be one of my favorite picks for a grid down power station is Ego just announced that they're gonna be incorporating solar panel compatibility. They're basically gonna be building their own 100 watt solar panels and 200 watt solar panels and making where you can charge this on the go for people who are affected by hurricanes, floodings, and whatnot, which I'm super impressed with, given the fact that this is a very tough, robust, weather resistant power station. So if you have to take it out in not the best weather or transport it into a vehicle when it's raining and there's not in optimal conditions, this is gonna be one of my best choices. So the Ego, has a peak output. It can handle peak of 3000 watts, continuous at 2000 watts. The awesome thing is the starting price, the price is places like Amazon or Home Depot. You can jump into this for about $1,000, which is amazing when I kind of further explain what Ego is kind of known for. 
It also has three 120 volt AC outlets, four USB ports. That's pretty much all it's rocking, but for the average person that would be using this particular unit, this is pretty perfect. And another thing I love of the fact is you can hot swap these batteries on the fly. They are designed to actually pop right out and you actually, these are the batteries that help charge the power station. This is just one giant, huge inverter. If you are in the Ego ecosystem, which is you are a homeowner, you own things like their push, their push mower, their weed whacker, their blower, their cordless chainsaw, pole saws, hedge trimmers, this thing is gonna be perfect for you. Because when most people buy a new house, they usually kind of revamp their lawn equipment and all that stuff when they move or they buy, maybe it's your first home, and you take that extra little bit of money you got from your home loan, and you just go and buy those things that you need. You buy your shed, you go get all those things, you fill up your garage. And if you go this route, this thing is perfect in my opinion. You can hot swap the batteries. You usually get these high capacity batteries in the stuff like your weed whacker, your blower, and your push mower. Like I said, if you're in the ecosystem, it's gonna be great because you can kind of prep low key. You don't look crazy to the neighbors. People are gonna see you hot swapping those batteries and putting them in your lawn mower and doing all that stuff day in and day out anyway. But then you've got a power station with all these batteries. I mean, oh, and then once they do the solar panel support, you're gonna be, you're gonna be set and ready to go because you're gonna be using those lawn landscaping tools day in and day out. But then when it comes time for natural disasters or something bad and your stuff goes south, you lose power, you've got to jump into using a power station, you've got it ready to go. Finally, we move to the energy power station. It has a also has a 3000 watt surge, but it also can handle 1500 watts continuous. Now, on the manufacturer suggested, they do suggest 550 continuous watts, but that's only for like optimal conditions. It's kind of like if you rent a U-Haul and they have that little fuel gauge. I don't know if you guys have moved recently, but you, I know you have seen it. It has like the green fuel gauge. If you keep it like, you know, you don't rev the, the motor too hard and you're kind of not going uphill, you'll get, op you'll get the best gas mileage. That's what they're saying. You'll get the best gas mileage. It has a 1500 watt inverter. You need to use it, you're good. They're also, both of these are expandable. You can get additional batteries for this. You can also attach lead acid batteries and whatnot to this thing. They're both gonna offer solar support. This one is gonna be one of my favorites and here's why. 2,000 cycles, meaning dead to life, 2,000 cycles, a good 10 year lifespan. That's insane for the energy. Not to mention that all the different ports on this thing have made it a godsend and it's already ready to go for solar panel support. But I'm not gonna lie, this is like $1,500, $1,600, but I've had mine for a very long time and I absolutely love it. And the fact that it's only 25 pounds makes it very easy to pick up. It's not heavy at all, given the fact that it is a big, big beast unit. This is a 90 amp hour battery for these being portable units that you can take on the fly and use them in emergencies for those casual preppers who don't wanna go full like homesteading and off-grid living, these two are some of my best. Like I said, if you're gonna jump into an e ecosystem, you are going to be using electronic, you know, go green for your landscaping, your lawns, because the average person who lives in suburbia does that stuff. So if you kind of jump into the ecosystem, this is one of the best options you could ever use. But if you're looking for a standalone unit, you live in an apartment, you're a single person who just wants to be bunker prep ready, you can throw this in one of your like bunkers or bombnados or you just have it that can be mobile but offer just nasty substantial amount of power. And if you want a further deep dive on the energy power station, I do have a video whoosh, right there in the right hand corner. You can just see that bad boy in action. All in all, these are my top 10 survival power stations for when the grid goes down. If you wanna learn more about any of these, links will be down in the video description. And also, if you got any questions, definitely check out some of the videos that will have linked down in the video description so you can learn more about the ones we've actually already tested and stay tuned for the ones that we have done testing on and we're gonna do videos on in the future. But like I said, if you enjoyed this video, definitely give this video a big thumbs up and share this out with your friends and family in your social media networks so we can keep growing, thriving, and making awesome videos for you guys. But that is the present for now. Hope you guys have an absolute wonderful day. I'm out.